Oh my, oh my gosh! Welcome to the Kitchen and Jorn Show. Hi. Today we are trying every Trader Joe's surgery you can have done to your face. Mm -hmm. Of which the there entire are surgical suite, I believe there are zero. eight procedures. <laughs> eight procedures? Yes. <laughs> Some of them are Trader Giotto when they're like the more Italian surgeries. Or... Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. You may have noticed that Brie is here and mm -hmm. Jen is behind the camera. What's up? That's because you already know what this video is about because you clicked on it. Unless you just sort of stumbled here from the Twilight Zone. In which case, welcome. Welcome, sorry. I'm sure it was a really traumatic day for you. Mm -hmm. So obviously you've clicked on this video so you know it's about the fact that Brie got facial feminization surgery. Yes, she did. She did, she did. Thus my whole swollen countenance at the moment. Do you want to explain what it is you're wearing? Yes, this is uh, from Donna Karen. It's, um, <laughs> yeah. this is a compression garment because one of the things I had performed was a neck lift to kind of give me a more feminine jawline. This compression garment kind of keeps everything together and is also generally going to reduce some of the swelling along my cheeks and neck. I'm just explaining the stuff that you can see first. We're obviously gonna get into, you know, all of it. First, so of course, we have some business to establish up top. First, Dustin. what is he doing? He's humping her head. Why? <laughs> Dustin has some business to establish himself. <laughs> Number one, obviously, if you're transphobic, I don't know why you're here, but if you are here, um, get out. you should get out. Cause like, nobody likes you. Nobody wants you here. Mm -hmm. If you're here to like make content off of this video, uh, you're a terrible person and mm -hmm. bad things are gonna happen to you in your life. And mm -hmm. everyone who knows you wishes they didn't. Yeah. And also, even if you're hot right now, you won't be forever. Exactly. Part two is that this is actually part one of this video. <laughs> we will be doing a follow-up video later on when Brie is more healed. Mm -hmm. The thing about FFS surgeries is that they can take a long time to settle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna be about a year before like my face is kind of the face it's gonna be. We will be back with this video in before a year, but when I'm a little less swollen and more normal looking, and we'll have, we'll have some idea of like kind of where my face is going and I'll have a better idea of kind of how I feel about the whole thing. But we thought it'd be good to make this video like about two weeks-ish out, mm -hmm. just so you can kind of get a sense of like, this is what it looks like two weeks out. Mm -hmm. Thing number three is I'm gonna be talking a lot in this video. Brie is obviously, you're doing okay. I'm doing all right. You're doing good, but like just to minimize the amount of like talking and like the amount of like jaw stuff she has to do. Mm -hmm. So don't be like you're silencing trans women. I'm just, I'm trying to like do a lot of like the lifting so that she doesn't have to do it. She's, she's giving voice to trans women's experiences. Okay, that's not what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, let's talk about what FFS is. FFS stands for Facial, Facial Feminization, Feminization Surgery. Surgery. The thing about FFS, it's not actually a single surgery. It is an umbrella term for a suite of different surgeries that are performed, usually all at once, but sometimes, you know, over like a couple sessions to give uh, AMAB people a more feminine appearance in their, in their face. You had 10 procedures. When I talked to the doctor after your surgery, she was like, we counted you 10. Okay. I believe these are the 10. I believe, okay. I believe it is shaped down your brow line. You had your uh, hairline moved down. I did. Cranioplacial something something. Guys, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. We're okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm just gonna say what it was, okay? All right. Hairline, forehead, mm -hmm. brow, mm -hmm. nose, mm -hmm. cheeks, mm -hmm. lip flip, mm -hmm. chin, mm -hmm. Adam's apple, yeah. um, neck lift. She said 10. I don't know what the 10th is. <laughs> we have a document somewhere that says it. <laughs> But basically what happened was the entire front part of your skull got remodeled. Yes. <laughs> but we should go back in time. <laughs> when did you start this process? This like the very beginning of this process? Around uh, the middle of 2021 is when I first started looking into FFS procedures. At the end of that year, beginning of the next year, I started talking to different doctors. Two and a half years ago. Yeah. I don't know if you guys uh, read the newspaper. Around 2020, there were a couple of things that happened that made it hard to access medical care. As to why, no one knows. So it just generally took a second for doctors to be able to see me. The first thing you did was you made three appointments, three doctors. It took six months to get those appointments. Mm -hmm. And then you interviewed three doctors. Yes. And then you picked one doctor. We aren't gonna name that doctor. No. And then from the time you picked the doctor, then what happened? After that was a process of getting some uh, scans of my skull so that they kind of knew what materials they had to work with, especially since I'd already had a septoplasty to repair a deviated 
and septum. They kind of wanted to know what shape it was in after the last surgeon had been in there. And then it was a lot of dealing with insurance, which was, you know, spoiler, is going to be a very annoying part of this whole process. This was two and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. And I remember the whole, like, we have to get imaging of the inside of my face, but mm -hmm. we can't get imaging of the inside of my face. And for some reason, they haven't seen imaging of the inside of my face. And they keep asking, where's the imaging? But I did the imaging. That whole saga, I think, was like three months. Yeah, and then, but then once that finally got sorted out, it was a matter of getting insurance involved and getting that all put together. A lot of these people tried their very hardest, but these are not great structures. We live in the state of California, mm -hmm. where there are laws about insurance companies have to cover FFS surgeries. Yes, and I have very good insurance. I'm yes. very lucky in that. Yeah. Uh, in that so respect. basically, the next step in the process was insurance basically had to sign off on basically paying for a hundred thousand dollars worth of surgery. A lot of surgery. Yes, I've spent a lot of time on the phone with uh, my insurance representative. Spent a lot of time on the phone with someone from the doctor's office. We think that we have something. About this time last year, we set a date and that was going to be for early April of 2024. And then. <laughs> and then. End of January, beginning of February, 2024. Mind you, I have put down a sizable deposit. I get a call from someone at the uh, doctor's office. They have not been able to reach what they call a letter of agreement with my insurance. Despite my insurance saying, yeah, we're gonna pay for it. Basically, what, what it came down to was the surgeon wanted the right afterwards to go in and say, okay, we said it was going to cost this, it actually cost this number, which is more, and the insurance wasn't going to write them a blank check for that. Yeah, and so basically what happened was the doctor was like, well, your surgery can still be in a month, but you're gonna have to pay us, what was it? $80,000 $80, out of pocket. And yeah. we were just like, that's silly. Yeah, so I was able to get my deposit back. And then you basically had to start the process over. I had to start the process all over. Completely over. And Completely this was over. two and a half years later. And here's where I actually start getting lucky. Through, my job, we have an ERG, an employee resource group. These people were very helpful for me when I was going through the process of helping keeping me sane. They were really good at providing me with recommendations, including people I had not heard of or considered before. Because you wanted a very specific procedure for your forehead. Yes, the craniofacial procedure is it's obviously very involved. There are not that many people who do it. And the person I had been talking with was trained by the person who innovated the procedure. And so you wanted to find a doctor who did this procedure, yes. but there aren't that many. There aren't that many. So this surgeon, we won't name the surgeon either, but basically like the, the big surgeon is a surgeon that like all the famous trans women go to. Mm -hmm. He gets amazing results. Yes. He has a beautiful office. I know people who have gone to him and they absolutely love the results. His style is not exactly my style, number one. And number two, I didn't really want to travel for this procedure. I wanted to be at home to recover. All surgeons who do these surgeries have like house styles. Mm -hmm. They all have like specific ways they like to do faces. It's mm -hmm. just, it's not like, I think an on purpose thing. No. I think it's just like, you know, an artist has their own style, a pizza to pasta, you know? Mm -hmm. You want to pick a surgeon that has a, a style that mm -hmm. you like for your face. Exactly. You sort of have to like imagine, it's sort of, you have to play face off with yourself, mm -hmm. except the other face isn't going on John Travolta, it's going at the garbage. Yes. Yeah. I found my new surgeon and I'm able to do a, a Zoom consult with him in like a couple weeks, which was incredible. I really like his style. I look at a lot of the before and afters and you know, it's very much kind of what I want and in terms of like how I kind of want to look and it's feminine without being overly, for lack of a better word, yassified. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're able to get a date with this doctor for two months later. Yes, it was three months, but three months regardless. Later. Oh, yeah. I had the consult with the doctor in mid-April and I got a surgery date for the end of July. So much faster. So much faster. I know. Yeah, it just really reinvigorated me because I was just like, I cannot spend another two and a half years in this chase. Yeah. And his office is just incredible working with insurance. I didn't have to make a single phone call to my insurance company. Went through the same things of, you know, got, got some CT scans, you know, everything was scheduled and there were no major hiccups before that date. I took my mm. surgery, oh my gosh, what, 5.30 in the morning? 5.30 in the morning, because we had to get super. down to Hermosa Beach. Yeah, and we, uh, yeah, we drove down super, super early before dawn. Good morning. Hi. What day is it? It is July the 25th at 5.51 a.m. We are driving to have my FFS performed. It's gonna be my last time driving for like a week. Everybody likes to drive, so. I do like to drive, and uh, but I'm gonna be in, entirely too high on the way back, so. Yeah, you can't drive on the way back. No, no, they, they discourage that. Yeah, you excited? Nervous, but I'm excited. It's gonna be fine.
It's gonna, 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 gonna. It's gonna be fine. There you go. Okay, I just left Brie. Um, they did not let me come back with her to prep her for surgery. Well, I'll be back here in seven hours and we'll see how Brie's doing. We are both told, oh, Brie will be done in like six hours. Mm -hmm. I dropped you off. Cause I, and at first I was like, oh, I might sit there for six hours. And I was like, I don't want to sit there for six hours. And so then I went home and then I like sort of like spun my wheels. I get a call right around, I don't know, 3.30. And I was just like, oh, is Brie done? And they were like, no, I'm actually Brie's gonna be in surgery for uh, six more hours. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? Wrong time. Wrong time. It was a 10 and a half hour surgery, mm -hmm. not a six hour surgery. So that whole day I basically was just like waiting. I washed your sheets. You got everything ready for me to come home. Which yes. Was amazing. So that's what happened to me. So then uh, I get a call around 8.30 and they're like, it's time to go get Brie. Brie's out of surgery. I'm in a bathroom. It's 12 hours later. Let's see how she is. I was a little scared. Uh, well, yeah, because my, <laughs> my, my, my face was cut open and a lot of the bones of it were broken and reshaped. Yeah, you look like you've been in a car accident mm -hmm. and, I was, and you had like two drains sticking out of your neck mm -hmm. that were like full of like blood basically. Yeah. Before this surgery, I think we were like, do we think this is gonna be easier or harder than Bodycon? And we were like, oh, this will be the it same. It has to be. We were wrong. Oh, what a fool. <laughs> <laughs> we were, it took 30 minutes for the doctor to explain to me all the post-op instructions for that night. Yeah. And I was like, I don't think I can do this. I feel like I was being given a baby. I'm out of it. You are out of it. You're out of it and you're so out of it that honestly I was like a little bit like, I don't think I can do this. Mm. I was like, what if something happens? It was fine though. It's day two, you're swollen. Mm -hmm. But I'm feeling, you know, I'm feeling okay. You're gonna have a black eye in your right eye, I can already tell. Yeah, I'm gonna go put some ice back on it. Yeah, that, this is the new face. Mm -hmm. So we had to go back to the office. We, you had to get your wounds cleaned. Mm -hmm. The doctor demonstrated to Kristen how to do that and how she could take care of me for the next week. Because basically, Basically for a week, I had to clean and dress all of mm -hmm. Bree's wounds twice a day. Towards the end, I got pretty fast at you it. Did get Towards the end, it only it only took me like 20, 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. But at the beginning, it was taking like at least 40, 45. 45, yeah, like each time. We just got Bree's drains out, so she no longer has drains in her neck. So I guess she's gonna have to squeeze the fluid out some other way. We're gonna have to juice her later. It's actually like gonna be very fun. I'm basically just killing time until Brie comes back from validating parking. And you might be saying, hey, Kristen, why are you making your wife do that? Because she has to. Walking is good for her. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Look at that. Your drains are gone. Mm -hmm. We're on day five. This is what you look like on day five. You less look like you got into a fight with a bear. Yeah, you also look like the bear who fought you was a very talented plastic surgeon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your face looks different. Mm -hmm. I can see the vision. It's like wild. Like, honestly, like, I know you're happy with it so far. Yeah, I am. I'll be happier once all the stuff in my mouth gone. But... Yeah, I feel like I'm kind of talking to like the yassified mommy right now. Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about your new face? Oh, I feel good. I feel good. Like the important thing and something I was told by everyone involved, not everyone goes through this process. It's not a linear process that everyone's going through at the same rate in terms of getting results from an FFS. I can't compare my results against anyone else's. I can only compare them against myself and that it is going to take some time for things to click into place. So like, I remember those first couple of days being like, Oh my gosh, this was a huge mistake. Like, I'm never gonna look right. And now, like, I'll catch myself in the mirror and just be like, oh, this is not a masculine face. Since the stitches got out and I, you know, got to remove a lot of the dressings and now I'm just working with the compression garment. Yeah, I feel a lot better. I feel like this is a face that I can work with. This is something that I can stand looking at in the mirror, you know? We should mm -hmm. take a little pause and talk about how good Bree's work looks. I think it looks so good. Yeah, so you're feeling good. You're recovering. I'm feeling good psychologically. I'm getting better physically. I'm mostly just so ready to eat normal food again, but I still have some like stitches and stuff in my mouth that need to dissolve. Oh yeah, you can't eat solid food for like three more days, right? For a couple more days. We have soups. So <laughs> we'll do like a little mailbag episode. So like yeah. if y'all have questions. Please uh, let us know. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that are not rude. Yeah. Not that I think any of you lovely, lovely, lovelies would give us rude questions. I do. <laughs> it's just super exciting. It's like, I just, you know, it's a very trust the process thing. Mm -hmm. Like you sort of have to trust the fact that like, if someone just cuts up your face for 10 and a half hours, it will turn out, yeah. <laughs> and I think it did, I think it turned out, yeah. I think yeah. it did, I think it did turn out, yeah. It turned out, yeah. Mm -hmm. But thank you, Brie, for sharing your story. Oh, thank you for all your support and- That's sweet. For, I, I no, 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 I, I sincerely could not have done this without you. Yay. Yay. <laughs>
Oh, well, that's the point. Yeah. <laughs> Should we go watch the Olympics? Let's go watch the Olympics. Let's go watch the Olympics. Okay. <laughs> All right. Love you guys. Bye. Mwah, mwah. Bye.